Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast and posse. I'm your host, Tiffany, and this is a special episode dedicated to all of my fellow multi-passionate entrepreneurs out there. And if you're like, what in the hell is a multi-passionate entrepreneur? It is someone who has so many different passions and interests. And oftentimes what happens is you are not sure which ones you should incorporate in your business. How in the hell do I incorporate incorporate all these things I want to do into my brand and business without confusing people, without confusing myself, without getting overwhelmed? And I get bored easily because I really want to do this, that, and the other, and I want to do all the things, and I want to do all the things all at once. Does this sound familiar? I am a multi-passionate person. Um, I do have a lot of interests, that is for sure. But I also know that you have just passion out there that's not reeled in and grounded. You ain't gonna make bank. It's just not going to happen. Um, I have witnessed friends and I even had a long-term employee in my other company who literally was one of the most, well, I shouldn't say like he's still with us, but not with the company anymore, but one of the most um, just intelligent, passionate really well read and educated on so many different subjects. You know that um that phrase it's like master is it jack of all trades master of none. And he was someone who should absolutely been like a multimillionaire entrepreneur and had every you know for sure as everything, you know, everything possible in there, but because he had so many interests and and probably mixed in with some like ADHD, it wasn't it wasn't refined and you know reeled in. It was just like a fire hose coming at you and therefore nothing ever monetized. He had his hand in a bunch of things and then nothing ever really made money or he would jump from one thing to the next to the next, like the next shiny object. That's also common for multi-passionate people. So the first thing I need to say is this, not everything you're interested in is meant to be monetized. Some things you're passionate about are just meant to be hobbies, like legit hobbies that have nothing to do with making money from that you just have fun with that you just geek out on. And that's okay. Don't think that you know, every single thing that you love, you have to make money from because that's a real fast way to burn out. So that's number one, some of these things you love are meant to be hobbies or are meant to be things that once you develop your core business and you really have real cash coming in that's consistent, then maybe other, you know, you can form a second business or something like that. You know, Project Me with Tiffany Carter is my second business, but I didn't start that until after having my first business for 10 years. Now, part of that was fear, and that's a whole nother episode, which I've already done. You guys can find it. 
but let's just say I started even um, seven years in or something like that. Um, I still would have made sure my first business was operating smoothly, was requiring less of my time. I had the right people in place. I had consistent cash and systems in place. And then it made sense for me to start my second business so I could dedicate my time and pour my heart into it. Because that first five years, I mean, really, it's your first five years of your business requires a lot more of your dedication, energy, and time. I mean, especially that first, you know, two, three years for sure. So you need to be realistic about stuff. I know so many of you see other multi-passionate entrepreneurs online or in real life, and they're authors, and they have courses, and they're speakers, and they have physical products they're selling, and they have a podcast, and it's like, oh my God, you know, I want to I wanna do all those things. They didn't do all those things from the start. They added those revenue streams over time. If you try to do all those things at once, even if you have some amazing investor who's willing to dump in, you know, a ton of cash into your business, it still won't work because your focus and energy is all over the place. And most importantly, it confuses the shit out of your ideal client. And confused ideal clients, confused people don't buy. So the re- if you're confused right now, like what should my niche be? But I want to do this. But how do I incorporate my network marketing business? But I also want to be a coach. But I also want to sell um, journals. But I also want to do downloadable meditations. You've got to slow your roll and start with some core things. And I highly suggest the core things you start with are what your ideal client has the demand for, meaning what they want the most. So you have to go back to the ideal client, not selfishly like, oh, what does Tiffany want to do the most? What excites her the most? Yes, that's important. And that's not what's going to make you money. So you can list all the things that you're passionate about, that excite you, that you're interested in. Okay, so now we have that list. Then go through it and see what are the things that my ideal client, what's the, what is there the most demand for, the market demand for? And then those are the things I want you to start with, but not five things. So I'll give you an example. I started Project Me with Tiffany Carter approximately two years ago. So there's an Instagram and there's a podcast. So I had two lead generators. Did I have, um, did I have a LinkedIn that was already established? Yes. Did I have Facebook? Yes. But I had all my Instagram posts just going to Facebook. My two main focuses for lead generators in serving and talking to my ideal client were this very podcast and Instagram and focused on that. So you need to have your lead generators in place first. So many people go, I want to sell this and I want to sell that. Really? Well, how are you going to sell it if you don't have the audience to sell to? So you need to get, you know, your lead generators going and cranking with your ideal client, like get that started. Okay. So that you can get an understanding of what your ideal client wants. Let them tell you, do not guess. When you guess, you make no money. When you guess, you actually end up spending and wasting a lot of money. It's a big mistake. Um, Even some big companies make, you know, if you get too much in your ego and you've had a lot of success and you're like, oh, I know what our, I know what our customers want, but you don't fact check. You don't ask them. You don't do surveys. You don't get that true, um, true response from them. And you're assuming that's when products end up at the 99 cent store. So those of you in the U S and I know they have variations of this in all different countries. So, but those of you have been to like those dollar stores, You'll notice in the dollar stores in the food section, that's where the land of um, lost products go. So there'll be weird shit in there like um, peppermint, peppermint peanut butter stuffed Oreos, you know, like really weird flavors. You're like, oh, my God, who thought of this? Like I saw this was a few months ago. I went into one. It was well, it was before quarantine, um, but it was like peanut butter. It was peanut butter stuffed jelly beans from some company or gummies. It was nasty. 
um, or certain colors, things that didn't appeal. So you'll see the land, the land of forgotten products, and they're just trying to solve salvage their losses by getting them at the 99 cent store, but they've lost millions and millions of dollars on them. That's what happens when you don't ask. So when you see people online, they're like, Oh my God, they have so many courses. They have all these, you know, ebooks. They have, they have, they have a actual like hardcover book. They're an author. You have no idea if they're making money on that shit. A lot of times they aren't because they've created all these assets and there's too many assets, too much to choose from. And they just keep chasing the market thinking if I just create the next right thing, then it will work. So I don't want that for you. We're not available for hard people like not happening. Let's let's do it in a smart way. So I need a real my multi passionate people back in like my grounded Virgo ass. I need to ground you ground you guys a little bit. So you have that list of all the things that you're passionate about. And I really want you to focus like what are the top two things that your ideal client believes they need. Remember, people only buy what they believe they need so that the mark, you know, there's a market demand for it. What are the top two things you're into? Is it, oh, I really want to teach, you know, and and it aligns with your passion too. So you're going to like doing it. So it's like, well, they really do want a course on, you know, a course on this. And I have on my passion list that I want to create a course. Okay. As long as you know, and you're not guessing what your ideal client wants, you actually know what they want. It's something I teach inside my Project Me Posse membership, how to know what your ideal client wants. So you're not assuming we know what happens then. That's where I want you to start. And then over time, you start building more assets, more revenue channels over time. I have multiple, multiple, multiple streams of passive income and asset channels. This did not happen in a year. This, by the way, didn't happen in five years. This happened in probably, I would say, 15 years, it'd be fair to say, the number that I that I have. Could it have happened sooner if I, you know, was someone who really was obsessive compulsive and like kept going at it, going at it? Sure. But I'm going at the pace that feels, you know, that feels good and right to me, which you also need to do that. So stop thinking that you need to be a fire hose with everything. Not everything's meant to be a fire hose, and it's also not possible to keep up that pace, nor is it necessary. So now you'll have your two things to focus on, and you don't have to guess. It's what your ideal client believes that they need, and that's what you do. You know, it's like, well, I know there's a there's a need for group coaching on this. I know there's a need to do done for you um, package services for entrepreneurs. I know that um, people really need right now ways to throw home parties since they can't travel and they want to, you know, they want to have higher end parties and high end decorations and party packs. And that's, and that's something they need. And it's also something you'd enjoy doing. So that's what you start with. Start with two lead generators where your ideal client is hanging out. And then two main things that you're offering. Maybe that is um, one on some kind of one on one service, you know, it could be coaching, it could be training, it could be accounting, it could be um, you could be a wellness practitioner, a healthcare provider, whatever that is, that maybe is where you start. Um, maybe it's something that you're starting with that there's no courses on this and people are going to want courses on this. Then maybe you start with a course, but I really need you to simplify and don't worry. You're going to be able to incorporate more of those passions of yours. If you truly want to monetize them, right? You can incorporate those down the road, but you got to slow your roll. And I know that's hard to say to someone who's passionate, but you've got to slow your roll. Here's another thing I need to say to you. A lot of times multi-passionate people, you know, normally you guys are like creatives. You can get really bored easily and, and the shiny object syndrome is real, you know, because that, that looks like, Ooh, that looks interesting. That's new. That's fun. And what, what it is, is this when, when you guys are starting businesses, you're in business, 
you're in, in a network marketing company. It's so exciting at first, right? It's so exciting. And then when you've got to get into the minutia of making money, meaning the tedious stuff, the unsexy stuff, the stuff that's not really creative, the stuff that's very right brain, the stuff that's not fun, the stuff that's not sexy. That's when you guys are susceptible to the shiny object because you're like, oh my God, that looks so much better. I thought I was passionate about this, but I'm not really passionate about this anymore. I've lost my passion for it. And now this is the thing. That's a form of self-sabotage. You're absolutely lying to yourself. Absolutely. There is no business. There's no network marketing company. There is no corporation. If you're someone who's, you know, an employee, there is no job out there. There is no business you can create out there that is exciting, um, creatively stimulating, mesmerizing, sexy, enjoyable all the time. I, I really hate to break it to you, but it's, it's just not going to be there. There is a lot of minutia that you have to do in business and mundane tasks that even if you have a team like I do, you still have to look over it. You still have to sign contracts. I still have to train people. I still have to check in. I still have to make lists. I still have to do taxes. There's a lot of things you have to do that do I like doing them? No, I hate doing them. It sucks. But I make sure that there's a balance. But sometimes there's not. Sometimes it just is what it is. And you've got like a backlog of admin adulty things you have to do. And it is what it is. That doesn't mean that it's not still your passion. So your passion has to run deeper than the actual act of doing something. If you're like, I'm passionate about speaking, I'm passionate about writing, I'm passionate about creating graphics. That's beautiful. That's not going to last. You guys know, obviously, I love communicating. I love talking to all you guys. I love teaching. I love empowering you. I love making you guys laugh. That is so true. It's like that that wouldn't be enough. You've got to have a passion for something much, much deeper with more substance than that. Because let's say, and God, please don't do this. But let's say I, you know, do this whole episode and something happens and the episode disappears, which, by the way, anyone who's a podcaster or has recorded anything knows that shit is going to happen at some point or has had it happen. I if that was the case and it was I would absolutely lose my mind or if something didn't do well I would lose my mind or when the tech stuff doesn't work I would lose my mind do I like when it happens no but I know my deeper purpose what gets me to show up day after day after day after day is because I want all of you to be able to live life on your terms in terms of freedom, meaning your freedom of time, freedom of cash, freedom of choice, and not be dependent on any person, place, or institution for money because I know how empowering that is. And I know what happens when you work on healing yourself and your relationship with money and you go you go after what you desire and deserve, you end up paying that forward and helping others. And then those people pay it forward and help others. How else do we think charities, nonprofits, churches are funded? I wouldn't be able to donate and give time to the sex traffic organizations that I work with if I didn't create this freedom for myself. That passion is so strong for me to be for you what what I didn't have. And I'm not saying that in like, oh, woes me. I had to walk 80 miles in snow to get to school. There just it wasn't a thing. There weren't um, coaches like me that were accessible. There wasn't Instagram when I started. I started 12 years ago. So I want to be there for you and be your guide and be your coach that I wish I had. That lights my fire. That gets me to show up on days when my coffee sucks. And you know how that feels when you're like, what in the hell? I put in the same shit I always put in, but something isn't quite right. You know what I'm saying? When your coffee's not right, you didn't sleep well, you're PMSing, you're in a mood, you fought with your significant other, you're whatever. All these things all at once all can happen. And yet I still show up. 
My beloved fur baby, Molly, collapsed in front of me suddenly on January 2nd. I still had to, the next freaking day, I still had to record a podcast episode. Did I have a choice? Would you guys have understood me, um, you know, you only having one episode for that next week? Totally. I know you guys would have understood. But I did it anyway. Because that's what leaders do. Not where I was sacrificing my health or anything like that. But I showed up anyway. And you want to know what? By me showing up anyway, when you show up regardless, it gives you, it builds your self-confidence, your self-worth. And it just is a good feeling. It was actually good for me to record that. Um, It was good. It got me out of my head for a moment. It always feels good to be of service. So a lot of times multi-passionate people, you guys get a little self-absorbed where it's about, I want to make money off doing this, this, and this, and you want to incorporate it all and you want it your way and you want it, you want to have all these things and you want it all now. That sounds like a child having a temper tantrum, doesn't it? Um, that That's why I say we have to reel it in and ground it and take a look at what makes sense and a trust it's going to build over time. And guess what? What interests you today is going to be very different than five years from now, guaranteed. So you wouldn't want to do it all at once anyway. But I do want to answer a question because this episode was actually inspired. I love when you guys DM me your topic suggestions, things you would love for me to talk about and post about because then I turn those into content for all of you, because this shows for all of you, it's not about me. Even though I'm talking, even though I enjoy it, I'm passionate about it. It's about all of you. And that's what I want you to keep remembering when you're looking at your passions. Now, a lot of you and this person did ask, which is what sparked it. You know, I'm in um, network marketing, but I also, you know, I also really want to make a course and help people with that with this thing. But how do I talk about both? That seems really confusing. There is absolutely a natural way to incorporate network marketing with another revenue stream. What is not going to work is if you're trying to incorporate too many things all at once. Because you're never going to get that your share of voice is going to be diluted. What I mean by share of voice is this. It takes most buyers six to eight times of hearing and seeing the same offer before they hand over their cash. So if you're sharing, these are my favorite hair products. And I just I have a free, you know, um, yoga download for you. Oh my God. And I just bought this. Look at this cute mug I just bought online. Oh, and I'm starting a group program to drop that baby weight. And oh, look at this. Um, look at this new journal I got. And here's a journaling exercise for you. No one is going, you've diluted your message. You've diluted your offer. You know what someone's going to remember about you? Perhaps nothing. And if there's someone who likes your energy and let's just say they, you know, they follow you and watch you all the time anyway, they'll just follow you. They won't buy anything. And you know what they'll remember? Oh, you know, Susie Q, she does a lot of stuff. She's crazy and kooky. She's into a lot of she's into a lot of things. They won't be able to pinpoint the actual thing that you do. So you'll end up being known for nothing. So when you stand for too many things, you end up not being remembered for anything and then your message gets lost. I see this in people who are very passionate about talking about a variety of causes. I appreciate that. I'm very passionate about a variety of causes too. But there is a reason why I fixate predominantly on one and then I have a secondary cause that I also will be vocal and share about. Because if I sat here and shared about these 10 different things that I have strong views on and I want to use my platform for, no one would remember any of them. The message would be lost and therefore it would help no one and serve nothing. Do you guys see what I'm saying? So you've got you've got to pick and choose. You just have to. If you want to be heard, if you want to make a difference, if you want to make cash. But there is always a way to incorporate 
You just have to be creative and you are creative. You're multi-passionate, but you're not thinking clearly because you're thinking how you're thinking of a spider web. How can I incorporate this whole spider web, still make money from it, still make impact? How can I do this? Now what am I supposed to write about? When you're not clear, you're not going to make cash either, right? And when you're not clear, you end up getting paralyzed in it and you don't take action. So you end up looking at stuff online, getting caught in the scroll hole, getting inspired one day, but then you get you get stuck in another. You're if you're stuck, it's likely because of that. So do the exercise that I shared in this. Another thing that I really feel would help you And I don't know if there's any spots left for July. I know I've put in some August um, time slots in there, but not sure if you guys know this, but I offer 90 minute power business sessions where they're customized. It's one on one and you can pick exactly what it is you want to talk to me about. So if you want to make sure you walk away with knowing your profitable niche, if you want to figure out how to incorporate these two things into your brand, something like that, that's who that 90 minute session is is a good fit for. No application is needed for those 90 minute sessions. You can go straight to booking it on my website. Now my two month exclusive private business coaching program, we are still taking applications for this is the first time I've ever taken applications in the summer. So that is more so if you want me to literally walk you through step by step. This is how this is your profitable niche. This is your ideal client. This is the proof of what your ideal client will buy, how you how you actually find more of your ideal client, how you convert those people from strangers into cash on repeat, on repeat, on repeat, and have a system that actually works and feels good to you. Um, that's who my two-month coaching is great for. So you either need to be like a new entrepreneur where you haven't even started or you're making less than $10,000 a month. Or I also work with experienced and established entrepreneurs where you're looking to go from like really, you know, you're looking to get to $500,000 a year to seven figures to multiple seven figures. My new entrepreneurs, my program is designed to get you to $250,000 a year. So both of those options to get help and guidance from me are available on my website right now. It's projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash work with me. Probably the best thing to do is just go to projectmewithtiffany.com and you'll see right on the top work with me and you'll see the different options right there and see what you we can, you know, also discuss like what would be the best fit for you. You can also DM me on Instagram at projectmewithtiffany and tell me your scenario And then I'll tell you which one I think would be a better fit for you at this time. So I hope for you multi-passionate people out there that this reins you in a bit. Please remember, and I've got to say this again, not all of your passions are meant to be monetized. In fact, I don't want you monetizing anything. That's a way to suck the soul out of your life, right? I mean... There's a lot of things that I enjoy doing that I don't monetize. Like, could I monetize my love for talking to my flowers and my passion for, you know, landscaping? Yeah, if I really wanted to go deep with it, sure I could, but that's not meant for that, right? That's just meant for me to enjoy that. Could I monetize the fact that I'm, you know, really into fitness, you know, and physical health? I could, but for me, that's meant to be, um, that's meant to be a passion. That is meant to be a passion that's not monetized. That's meant to be a hobby. Do you guys see what I mean there? So maybe there's crafts that you do. Maybe um, when you're like, oh, I really want to have a blog, a lot most a lot of times a blog's meant to be a hobby because once i tell you what it really takes to monetize with a blog most of you are not very interested 
All right. If you guys love this episode, do me a favor. Go leave a five-star written iTunes review. In turn, I will treat you to a coffee drink of your choice or a smoothie of your choice in gratitude. All you need to do is make sure you put your name or your Instagram handle inside the iTunes review and then DM me and say, hey, I just left you an iTunes review. Ideally, you would include a screenshot, but if you don't, it's okay. Um, just so we can cross reference your name or your Instagram handle and see that it's in the review. And then I will gladly treat you to a coffee drink or a smoothie of your choice. I really love that exchange of energy. And if you really enjoyed the show, and you want to spread that good word and share that gratitude for it, the best thing you can do is really leave that five star iTunes review. I can't stress that enough. That's what makes the show grow. Plus, I read all of them and I will feature them on my social media accounts, which is always fun for people to read and to get inspired by wishing you guys great health, wealth and worth as always. Love you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.